Hi, I'm Daniel and this is Asheville. Today we're going to talk about owning, financing, leasing or renting vehicles, plant and machinery for commercial use. No matter what business you're in, there'll come a point when you need to purchase kit, irrespective of your size and resources when you're deciding between owning, financing, leasing or renting, there are a number of factors you need to take into consideration. A lot of people ask me, what should I do? Now, even if I had the time to respond to everyone, it's not that straightforward. The answer is unique to each business and individual, and we need to take into account the size of your business and the culture of it. What I'll try to do in this video is outline the factors you need to take into account once you've decided that you need to acquire a commercial vehicle, plant, machinery, or any big ticket items for your business. When I started, I used to buy older lorries which I could afford to buy outright because I didn't want to commit to large overheads over long periods of time. My thinking was if we were not busy, I could park up the lorries and limit my outgoings. That worked for me, but may not be the best option for you. Before I continue, I want to point out that I am not a financial advisor and I am not telling you to do this. I am merely sharing my experiences and knowledge with you. The main factors you need to consider. The first one being money at bank. This is how much money is in your bank account at that particular moment in time. Cash flow. Do you have a forecast of what your expenses and income will be for the coming months? Funding. Now, can you actually get finance? And if you can get finance, what sort of interest rates are they? Workflow forecast. Do you have any jobs which have been agreed which are going to start in the coming months or does your order book look rather empty? Business plan. Do you have a plan of how you're going to move your business forward and how this bit of kit will help it? Depreciation. How much is the bit of kit worth now and how much will it be worth in the coming months and years? Maintenance. How are you going to look after it and how much is that going to cost? Tax implications. Will this bit of kit be deducted from your tax or will this be an increased ongoing cost? How quickly do you need it? If you've got a job which is starting next week, can you get everything in place in time? Are you missing out on opportunities? Without this particular bit of kit, what are you losing? Do you have the staff and infrastructure to make a purchase like this? Once the bit of kit arrives, who's going to look after it and who's going to operate it on a daily basis? In my company, I'm the one who looks at all these factors and makes the decision. It's not something that I've ever handed over to operations or accounts. Truth be told, it is not my favorite part of the process. I much rather sit down and specify the vehicles, plant and equipment. Now, there are four ways to do this. Number one, buying outright. Now, this is where you purchase the vehicle, plant or machinery in full. You own it 100% unencumbered and there is no debt associated with that asset. Now, you can do this uh, brand new from a showroom, you can buy from an auction or you could buy from someone selling. Now, when you sell this bit of kit, you will get all of the money which it is worth at the time of sale. What's important to remember is if you do not buy this asset with cash at bank and you use a company credit card, for instance, you will still have the debt. The asset will be unencumbered itself, but you will still have the debt associated with it. Number two, higher purchase, aka finance. Now, this is where you purchase the kit and then you pay for it over an agreed period of normally one to five years. Generally, finance companies won't let you do less than one year because they also want to make some money in the deal out of interest. If you do pay it off early, there could be charges to exit the agreement. Interest rates in these agreements generally do not change, irrespective of what's going on with the Bank of England. Typically, you put down a deposit and pay monthly. Now, this new Scania was 120K. We put down a 10% deposit and we paid 2,800 a month. This Volvo, we bought secondhand. This was 65K. So we put down a 10% deposit and we pay roughly 1,400 a month. You don't always need to put down money to have a deposit. When we wanted our new Liebherr R926, which is a 26 ton digger, we traded in our old Cat 311C and then agreed to pay £4,000 a month for a four year period. Our L860, now this was £480,000. We put down a £60,000 deposit and pay £8,000 a month for five years. Because vehicles and plant are assets which retain value, funders are often very happy offering terms. Let me give you a tipper as an example. At 120K, if you put down a 10% deposit and then you pay 2,800 a month for a 12 month period, which includes 
interest, roughly the vehicle still owes about 95K, not 92 as you would think because you are paying off interest. Now, should the worst happen and you default on payment, the finance company would repossess the vehicle, they would sell it on the open market, they would get all their money back and any surplus money would go back to you. Now, when the vehicle or machine is on finance, you still own it, however, there is a charge. Now, this can be seen when you do a HPI check. When you complete the agreement or settle the outstanding balance in full, that charge will be removed. If you sell before the term is complete, the finance company must be paid first and any surplus goes back to you. Also bear in mind, the VAT is due at the start of the agreement, not on the monthly payments. However, you can get a VAT deferral to help you with cash flow. Number three, leasing. Now, rather than using your money or borrowing to own, this is where you use the vehicle or machine over an agreed period of time, which is generally one to three years. The leasing company will handle the road tax, MOT, maintenance, and other associated costs. At the end of the term, the vehicle is given back to the leasing company. Now, the leasing company will allow you some level of reasonable damage, but within your contract, you will have an amount of miles which you are going to cover and the reasonable wear and tear is sometimes open to negotiation. If you pass over these thresholds, there could be additional charges. The deposit will generally be three months up front, and at the end there is an option to buy, but this is generally unattractive as the whole point why you leased in the first place is because you didn't want the challenges associated with ownership. Number four is renting. Now this can be long or short term. You rent a vehicle or machine for a period of time and then give it back with no questions asked. The rental rate is fixed but can be negotiated if you're taking it for a long period of time, let's say three months, and the contract is rolling. It's time to compare. Let's talk about the pros and cons of each. Owning outright. Pro. It could help you sleep a lot better at night. For instance, if you have 20 tippers all on finance, all costing you £2,800 a month and work goes completely dead, it's a deep dish coming up with that amount of money at the end of each month. It acts as an asset on your balance sheet. It can reduce tax if you are lucky enough to make a lot of money in that year. There are no limitations or penalties for the amount of miles you do or the damage. Freedom to customize to your company colors to enable you to continue to grow your brand. Uh, now you can also do this with financing, but if you were doing it when leasing, you would need to put it back to its original state, which can be costly. You're free to make any alterations and modifications that you see fit. It acts as a bank. At any time, if you decide to sell that piece of equipment, you have unencumbered money which will come straight back to you. Cons. Now, it can be a large outlay, and depending on the size of your business, it could negatively affect your cash flow. Your VAT is due at the time of purchase. Again, another cash flow issue. Depreciation. Now, all vehicles and plant will devalue, so there's pressure to ensure that it is making more money than it is losing. When it's time for selling, you are fundamentally on your own. Now you can sell it at an auction, on the open market, or you can trade it in for a new bit of kit that you want to buy. But fundamentally, when all is said and done, that's your own business. You will be by yourself in the open sales market. The pros of higher purchase. You now know exactly what you need to pay on a monthly basis for the duration of the agreement. You can request the VAT deferral from the finance company. Now this is where they give you an invoice for the purchase, but you don't pay the VAT. You submit this in your VAT return, you get the money back, and then three months down the line, you pay the finance company the VAT. This massively helps with cash flow. If you find yourself stuck financially or things slow down like they did when we had lockdown for COVID, you can always go back to the finance company and request a payment break. Now, this can be anything between three and 12 months. Once this is done and you get back to paying normally, the outstanding can be added to the end of the agreement or they can recalculate the remaining payments. Every penny you pay goes back towards paying off an asset which you will one day own. It can reduce your taxes. If you're lucky enough to make a profit, then the monthly payments towards the asset are deducted. When using financing, it generally means that you can stretch yourself a lot further than if you were buying outright out of your own pocket. Now, generally, this means you can buy nearly new or new vehicles. Generally, when you're buying vehicles or plant like this, they are more reliable and you can have manufacturer's warranty for between one to two years. You can customize to your company colors and continue to grow your brand. It can act like a bank. Basically, if you find yourself stuck and you need to sell the kit, as long as you don't have negative equity, you can get some money back into your business. If you complete the entire agreement and then you sell them at the end, you can have a cash flow injection into your business. 
you're building up your company's credit file. Now, once you demonstrate that you are capable of making the monthly payments, finance companies will offer you more. Now, this is great as long as you do not overgear yourself, but generally finance companies can take a view on your business, looking at how much you own and how much you owe. The cons, you are agreeing to long-term commitments in an uncertain market. Depreciation, while you're trying to pay off the item, it's losing value on a daily basis. You don't technically own the asset until the final payment is made. You're actually paying a higher total cost over the duration of the agreement because you're paying interest. When it's time for selling, you're fundamentally on your own. Leasing, one of the pros, you're able to grow your business without the large capital outlay. You have a fixed cost each month so you can plan cash flow. You have no headache with servicing or maintenance. Cons, charges for damage. Now, if you're looking at things like grabs and tippers, it is near impossible uh, to keep them spotless with the kind of work they do. And this can cost you when you return a vehicle after the lease period. Mileage penalties. If you go over the agreed mileage, when you hand it back at the end of the term, there can be huge costs. Now, this is done on a per mile basis. The money you're paying on a monthly basis does not go towards the ownership of the asset. The asset will not be in company colors to help you grow your brand. Renting, the pros. Now this is very responsive. If you have a new job start and you can't keep up with it, you can rent within a few days. You have breakdown assistance. If you break down by the side of the road or the machine breaks down in your yard, the company will come out and fix it immediately. You have no cost of maintenance or any other associated costs. All you need to do is put fuel in it and daily tariff charges. You can change the item quickly at any time. Uh, this week you may need a grab, next week you may need a tipper, the week after you may need a digger, the week after you may need a loading shovel. Cons, the money you pay does not go towards the ownership of the asset. It will not be in your company colors to help you grow your brand. Again, very strict criteria on damage. Note, when you're doing a rolling contract, the hire company can take the vehicle or machine at a week's notice if they have another job for it. You are also paying a premium. If you were to take the weekly rental and you were to add it up, it would be a lot more than the cost of financing or leasing. Let me give you a real world example. A small kitchen company who generally make four to five kitchens a month have got a massive contract and they have to produce 2,000 kitchens in a four year period. Now previously, they let couriers bring their kitchens to site, but they have experienced problems because they can get damaged and some of the items with the kitchen are very delicate. So they do not want to buy outright because they need to manage cash flow and they have plenty of material to buy. So based on the strength of this agreement they have with the house builder, they take a new truck on finance and they take the delivery process in-house. They decorate it in all their company colors so they begin to grow their brand even more. They now have reliability. They know exactly how much it's gonna cost them each month. They're growing their brand and at the end of it, they would have paid off an asset. Another example could be a tipper driver who works for a firm, but they wanna go out on their own. In this scenario, it's probably best that they save money and try to buy the vehicle outright, a second-hand vehicle, because they don't wanna to commit to the monthly payments while they're trying to pay it off. And generally, buying a second-hand vehicle, you would worry about maintenance, but as they'll probably be driving it themselves, they'll take care of it that bit better, and they can handle the small items of maintenance themselves as well, again, saving on costs. They probably would not brand the vehicle because when they go to sites for the larger companies they're doing haulage for they wouldn't want to tread on any toes as they begin to build their business they may do this again with the second and third lorry but by the time they get to the fourth lorry if they've secured a contract they then may move over to new vehicles with a deposit and then pay in then monthly there are loads of videos and websites online with more information that you can look into. There is no right or wrong way of doing it. Every individual and every business is different. What works today may not work tomorrow as we continue to live in an evolving financial climate. For some, the chains of ownership are too heavy. For others, the freedom of ownership is priceless. Everything's a risk. You need to set aside time and resource, take into account all the factors and make a decision what is best for you and your business. I know a lot of Asheville viewers are owner operators, business owners, and entrepreneurs. Hopefully you found this video useful. My experience is limited to the UK market, but I'm sure there are options internationally which are similar. Thanks for watching and let us know any other business insight videos you'd like us to do. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see a video on how I went from one to over 35 lorries and machines. And click here to see a video where I sold our older lorries at auction.